Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our Talks with Walt as we are referencing our readings through every poem of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are in the Children of Adam section and we now are to the final three poems. We will be looking at I Heard You Solemn Sweet Pipes of the Organ. Now this is a fascinating poem. Many of my students have reported this poem has this amazing tendency when read out loud to be experienced out loud in profound ways. It is one of those several music poems as we often reference them in our study of Leaves of Grass. Of course, go back to our certain country chatsi from, um, from uh, the inscriptions passage. Now, my assumptions, uh, uh, and this is an important one for this uh, reading, is that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net all the way from the inscriptions uh, poems all up and through it, including all of the other poems of Children of Adam, uh, and, and the last one that we have just done, Once I Pass Through a Populous City. Now, background information here really does matter. Um, Norton's will remind us that originally, the poem reflected the sentiments of love and war appropriate to the time of its first appearance in the New York Leader, October the 12th, 1861, and it ran under the title Little Bells Last Night, for reasons that we'll get into in a, in a moment. However, that original poem, actually its first line began, War Suggesting Trumpets, I Heard You. The opening three lines and the seventh were omitted when Whitman again printed it in the sequel to Drum Traps in 1865 to 1866. And with no other further alterations, it was transferred to the Children of Adam group in 1871, so the poem has traveled a bit. I just want to point out the melodic nature of this poem. It is an amazing tour de force in a little brief poem that, uh, ironically, a lot of people who love Whitman don't know this poem, and then they read it, and they're like, well, this is an amazing, amazing offering for so many kinds of things, but I just want to concentrate for a few moments with you on the sound of this poem. Let's just read it and enjoy it. I heard you saw them, uh, sweet pipes of the organ. <clears throat> I heard you saw them, sweet pipes of the organ as last Sunday morn I passed the church. Winds of autumn as I walked the woods at dusk I heard you long stretched sighs up above, so mournful. I heard the perfect Italian tenor singing in the opera. I heard the soprano in the midst of the quartet singing. Heart of my love. You too I heard murmuring low through one of the wrists around my head. Heard the pulse of you when all was still ringing little bells last night under my ear. Now, <coughs> excuse me, this is a fascinating poem because of the way that Whitman plays with sound. Notice, I heard you solemn sweet pipes of the organ. By the way, notice solemn sweet is hyphenated. I told you he loves to make one word out of two. Of the organ, as last Sunday morn, we're going to get to mournful later, the juxtaposition of the two words. I passed, again, uh, the church, and, and a lighted verb. Hey, notice he's not in the church. He's walking past the church, and he hears the organ inside of the church, right? And then we're in fall, winds of autumn. As I walked, again, another lighted verb, the woods at dusk, we think of our Thoreau, don't we? I heard your long stretched, another related verb, sighs up above, so mournful to tie us to mourn. By the way, did you notice the pipes and the past? Do you hear this, the amazing sounds? I heard the perfect Italian tenor. Now go back to what we said in um, Song of Myself, passage 26, about opera, as well as um, in inscriptions when we commented on to a certain country, Chachi, um, and the fact that Whitman himself, you'll remember we said, was very influenced by Madame Marita uh, Alboni in the New York season of 1852 to 53, that 10 operas that he attended. He said he saw every, every time that Alboni sang. Um, so we're referencing that here as well. I heard the soprano in the midst of the quartet singing. And then there's this interesting heart of my love line with an exclamation point. You too, I heard. And then it's interesting, it's not singing, it's murmuring low 
through one of the wrists around my head. We immediately start thinking of Song of Myself, Passage 5. Of course, this use of the word wrists four times in Children of Adam alone, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of remarkable. And then he continues, heard the pulse. Pulse is used three times in Children of Adam. Of you, when all was still ringing, little bells last night, the original title again in 1861, under my ear. Now, let's just point out the genius of this poem. Notice how it's constructed, describing <clears throat> four kinds of musical sound. First, we have artificial or instrumental sound. Second, we have the music of nature. Third, notice we have the singing human voice. And then finally, we have the audible pulse of human love. Now, I love this construction and deconstruction of this poem to make us begin to think about it in even more powerful ways. Well, what is it that will be for us a major message from a, uh, from a poem like this one? Well, of course, the life that is most precious is the life for Whitman all about music. Now, of course, music for Whitman is everything, isn't it, right? I hear America singing, we've talked about from the inscriptions passage. At 2B, though the poem's rhythm in the meter is like music itself, its tonal quality is quite a remarkable poem. At 3A, well, there are so many references that could be made here, right? I just want to mention, obviously, the ones we've mentioned already from Leaves of Grass, but I just want to mention the Homeric tradition. What is that opening line of the Iliad, right? Um, sing, O goddess, of the rage of Achilles. The idea of singing and music is foundational to the Homeric great poems. And let's remind ourselves from an earlier lecture about Whitman's biography that he loved to walk the beaches, we're told, and to chant or sing lines from Homer, especially the Iliad um, and, and the Odyssey, right? So we've got this kind of tradition that Whitman is playing around with. We can finish at 3B in a way to tie this to yourself by asking, what is your favorite music? And what are those texts that for you remind you of your love of music? I hope that your study of these poems will challenge you to want to read them out loud, memorize a few of them, and even memorize them out loud. Thank you.